Okay, so why don't people say that Jewish believers believe in two gods because Jews believe in the Holy Spirit too? That's a really no, good. No, 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 wait, David and Goliath. That's a really great question because I, I used to think that too when I was a Christian, but they actually don't. And Rabbi, finally, we have our first topic we're going to hit on. All right, well, just real quickly, the term Ruach HaKodesh does not mean Holy Spirit. It means the spirit of holiness. And if you actually, you know, pick up the Bible and read it, what you'll see is that it refers to the ability of a prophet to perceive and receive prophecy from God. So when a prophet says, please don't take away your spirit of holiness from me, he's saying, don't take away my ability to commune with you. And that that's not... That's not seen as God, a person of God, an expression of God, a, a uh, I don't know how else to put it, person of God is how Christianity puts it. That's not how we see it. And, 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 and if it's a person of God, there are many, many manifestations of God. There's the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the evil spirit, the lying spirit of God. There's the burning bush. There's the destroyer. These are all manifestations of God. Why did Christianity only stop at three? And they believe in Satan as God of the earth, so... And Satan is in, in, explicitly called the Lord God of, of this earth, yeah. using the same word in the original uh, Koine Greek as the word God for God. So, yeah, right. no, we don't believe in two gods, and we don't believe in the Holy Spirit as Christianity believes in it. We believe in a spirit of holiness, and it's not a person of God, divine, whatever, so... right. Any verses you want to tie into that? No, uh, not that I can think of offhand. Okay. You know, but as Laura points out, old school. <laughs> yeah. Well, old old school. Old, just old just so Stephen doesn't think they don't exist. That, like I said, the show we just did today with Robert Singer, chopped it up like tremendously. Um, in, in fact, uh, if you'd like, I'll just. Thank uh, you. I'll just. Run. Andrea got the song immediately. Look at that. Thank you, Andrea. <laughs> So, Stephen Steele's wrote that? I'll be darned. I didn't know that. Let's see. Here we go. Screenshots. Oh, yeah. There's tons of them here. Holy cow. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, let's see. A lot of them in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy is very, was very um, adamant on pushing, making sure everybody knew that there was no multiple gods. You know, Deuteronomy 24, 5, 20, 18. Andrea okay, there asks it is. the very Deuteronomy thirty two uh, thirty nine. See now this is I am I am the one there is no God like uh God like me. I cause death, life, a strike. That's that's not even what I was looking for. That, that's an okay one, but Deuteronomy which? <laughs> I know you have two, which is something like fifty two different verses talking about the absolute one absolute oneness of God. That's that's the one. Are you talking about the one that I created? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I do have that. I could just go go over that. Uh, let's see here. One of these days, I'll commit these to memory. But there's tons of them. I yeah. say it's kind of. You can I commit see. that many to memory. More power. <laughs> Toby Singer could, but I certainly can't. All right, let's take this call. Caller, you're live on the air. Please tell us name where you're calling from. Hello, you're live on the air. Hello. Yep, you're live on the air. How are you doing tonight? How you doing? My name's Steve. Steve, welcome. Just, Hi, uh, Steve. You guys were talking about me a little bit. All right, good. Glad you called in. Good. Well, I can't hear you that good. Wait a second. It's kind of like an echo. Uh, let's see if I can fix that while you talk. If you would if go you ahead. You got a lot of bass on your side. I do. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, actually, I don't know why it's coming through because my bass runs through the entire board, not just the phone call. Let me let me let me take some of it off real fast though. Tell me if this helps you a bit. Okay. Is that better? No problem. Yeah. Okay. Good deal. All right. Go ahead with your question. What's that? Do you, do you have a question for tonight? No, I was just. I wanted to tell you uh, a little bit about my testimony, if that was okay. Uh, well, let's leave you know, the show open for uh, for questions, because this is what this is for. You can send me an email if you want to, uh, to knocktalk okay. at gmail.com. Um, but, uh, but we're definitely <clears> – <throat> were you the one that was talking about um, uh, that you that Satan was trying to kill you like a daily almost? Was that the – Oh, I mean, Satan's been trying to kill me since I was 10 years old. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Through accidents. You. Through accidents. And, I agree. Uh, just recently when I was baptized in the Holy Spirit eight years ago, um, then Satan really came at me hard. Yeah, I experience, you know because, what's funny? I experienced that as well. <laughs> I was a Christian for many yeah. years. I spoke in tongues. 
uh, baptized in the Holy Spirit the whole nine yards until later on I found out that there's nothing more than a Kundalini spirit and there's nothing holy about that at all. It's not scriptural. No, it's the not Kundalini scriptural. is not holy, no. No, no, no. That speaking in tongues and the Holy so, you know. Spirit baptism is not holy. That's right. my point. Uh, That's all. It's all nonsense. It's all not scriptural. Is the point? It's not. When I say yeah, scriptural, I'm not scared I don't, of Satan. Though I, I just wanted to get that clear with you guys. I'm oh not yeah, that's cool. Satan. Right on. And uh, I'm, I'm not like the religious spirit is watered. Like the the spirit of religion is like everybody's religious now. Everybody's going to heaven. You know, everybody's washed in water, but they're not baptized in the Holy Spirit, and that's a problem. No, it isn't. They don't have to be baptized in any Holy Spirit. There is no such thing as being baptized in the Holy Spirit, except for... Well, that's your opinion. No, no, no. I mean, did Steve, God tell no, you that? No, that's actually the Bible's opinion, because Steve. if you divide God into <clears throat> many parts, where each part is separate and unequal from the other yeah, two, then you've got saying, multiplicity man. of God. Okay, so, so God Rabbi, 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 hang on. He's having a hard time hearing it through the phone, so I can hear him yeah. fine. So let me let me say this, well, and I'm, I'm going to let you hang up and let you watch the slow, answers. because I can't hear you, because when you talk fast, it's too much bass. You're not going to listen to the answers Technology. here. You're going, yeah, I'll listen to you. No, 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 no. I have no, no pride in my I, heart no more, man. Okay. You're, you're, I have no hate, no <laughs> anger, nothing. Hey, Steve, Steve, one second. I'm not accusing you of having pride. I'm telling you, you don't need to listen to it on the phone. Hang up, ah, the f- okay. hang up the phone and listen on your computer where the sound is coming through clean so you can understand it. Uh, That's yeah, I don't I have saying. a computer. This is my so this how is you, computer I have. How, how are you watching the show? How did you get in the chat if you don't have Through my computer? phone. Well, my phone that's fine. YouTube. What I mean, it doesn't have to be a computer. It can be an iPad. It can be a tablet. It can be a cell phone. I'm yeah, just I don't have an iPad. I don't buy technology. <laughs> it's bad. It's bad enough. I got the Satan's phone in my hand. Okay, you know so so were you watching this the show on your phone? Yes. Then go back to your phone and watch it on the phone. That's my point. I'm not telling you to go buy uh, okay. buy from this company or that company. I'm just saying, whatever you were using before you called in where you could hear me clearly, go back to that. Yeah, to I can hear, hear you answer. clearly. Okay. I'm saying go back to that for your answer. That's all I'm saying. And then just and then just text you, talk well, to you through text? No, I mean, I, you, already, you already kind of stated your case, and then what, but you said that you can't hear us very well, and so I need you to be right. able to listen to our answers. Otherwise, the phone call is a waste. So, okay, I just got one more question. Go for it. Are your question? Are your answers coming from within yourself, or are they coming from God? They're coming from God directly. You know how I know? How? Because they are written contract called the Tanakh, the, what you would call okay. the Old Testament. Everything that we believe has to come from that source. If it doesn't, then you're believing in yourself as a wrong, as a wrong God. You're, you yourself are your own God above the God of the. I'm Hebrews. not my own God. No, that, I'm not my the, own if, God. That, if that's true, then you will trust what's written in Tanakh, plain and simple. Yeah, if I you, trust. Yeah. Do you do you trust the Do you trust the Tanakh? Do you trust the, the what you would call the Old Testament? I trust Jesus with my life and with my Look, death. The, Jesus isn't in the Old Testament. Do you trust the Tanakh? Do you trust? No, he's written? not in the Old Testament. No, but he was alive. I, I believe he was alive. Okay, let me ask you a question. Um, do you believe in the virgin birth in Isaiah seven? Yes, I do. Okay, then that's 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 a good place for you to start. Did you know there's no such thing as a virgin birth prophecy? It's a mistranslation. You have been bought. You bought a false doctrine from ten years old, however it was when you first found Jesus. That doesn't exist. It's a Christian push thing to try to get people to serve their Christianity. It doesn't exist. Yeah, I don't You've been worshiping that, a false I mean, god. God didn't show me that. So. Let's, it's it's there now. You can find it yourself. Go to Isaiah seven fourteen in a Jewish Bible and look up the actual Hebrew translation. It doesn't say virgin. It's not there. Christianity it's like is when they when they made the Bibles, they didn't have numbers next to them. Christianity, you know, the, world, the people listen, of the, the world. The Hebrew scriptures do not do not have verses either, no. but that's how you will find where it's at. Go to Isaiah seven fourteen and look up where you think it says virgin, and find and be amazed it doesn't say virgin. Christianity is a myth; it's built on mistranslations and lies. That's that's it. So okay, we'll leave the phone. <laughs> I missed a good, probably missed a good phone call. I apologize for ranting on like that, but I had to make sure that that was clear before the caller hung up. So uh, please call back if you just called in and I missed you, Rabbi. Sorry for bogarting that whole thing. Oh no no no, that's perfectly okay. You have a lot more patience than I do. Okay, this is not a forum for people to witness. This is a, for- <laughs> a forum for people to respond to their witnessing. Okay, so we do not give a platform for people to witness to us. 
that gets shut down instantly. Gotcha. Right. That's true. Okay, here we go. All right, let's go right here. Caller, you're live on the air. Please tell us your name and where you're calling from. Hi. Um, yeah, this is Rob. This is Robbie. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes, go right ahead. Welcome, Robbie. Let me switch over here. Sure. Yeah, so um, what what does it mean in Isaiah where it says your righteousness are as filthy rags? What you're, is that referring to? Okay, Rabbi, uh, your righteousness is like filthy rags in Isaiah. What does that mean in all right, let's see what we got. Isaiah 64, 6. 64 yeah. and 6. Yep. We all kind of thing. Wait. Yeah. We, but we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are filthy racks, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. It's talking about hypocrisy. It's talking about people who claim to be righteous but who aren't. That's why it says the righteousness are as filthy rags. Uh, Whoever it was that called in about the unclean thing or filthy rags, okay, there is none that calls upon your name that stirs up himself to take hold of you, for you have hid your face from us and consumed us because of our sin. This, this, and when it talks about the righteousness as his filthy rags, what he's saying is, is that you, it's hypocrisy. It's people who pretend to be righteous, who pretend to be pious, but whose deeds belie their righteousness. What Christianity makes this into is that nothing we can do can save us from our sin. We're totally helpless, totally useless, totally bad, totally sinful, totally sinners, totally, <clears throat> totally, 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 totally. And that's not what the Hebrew Scripture says at all. Right. We are perfectly capable of repentance. The book of Jonah, what did the people of Nineveh do? Stop doing the bad, repent, stop doing, start doing the good, and they were forgiven. Parenthetically, with no blood sacrifice either. But the Christian interpretation of this is filth, your righteousness is filthy rags is that your righteousness is meaningless. It's not what it's saying. What it's talking about is hypocrisy. It's people who pretend to be righteous, but who aren't doing righteous things. Okay, so let's. Here's one for this is just a topic idea. There was a it was a comment in chat that said perhaps Genesis three fifteen, and it talked about uh, Abraham sacrificing his son. That's, yeah, that's, that's Genesis 19, I believe, right? Or Wait, 315? Yeah, 315 is about the snake uh, striking the heel, I believe, or the seed. Right, I put seed, enmity whatever. between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. It shall bruise your head and you, it, and you shall bruise his heel. Right. Okay. Uh, by the way, I guess that snakes really don't attack human beings. They don't bite our feet. And human beings don't ever step on them again because we've defeated Satan. Right, that's a good point. <laughs> well, that's what they claim. Yeah, that's true. Jesus defeated Satan, so we have absolutely nothing to be afraid of. Why be afraid right. of a snake if the snake was Satan? Okay, so was the Akeda, pardon me, was the uh, Abraham sac uh, offering or sacrificing Isaac attempt, was that um, preparations for humanity accepting the atonement through Jesus' sacrifice? No, to the contrary. The whole point of God providing a lamb, and a ram, instead of... Uh, taking the son of uh, Abraham is a lesson that we're not supposed to do human sacrifice, okay. which, by the way, is repeated again in the Hebrew Scriptures in uh, Deuteronomy chapter um, uh, 12, 12 or 13. I think it's, I always get that mixed up. Right. Don't be like the nations, okay, saying, how did they nations serve their gods? We'll do the same thing. You shall not do so to the eternal your God for every abomination to the Lord, which he hates. Right. Have they done to their gods? For even their sons and their daughters have they burnt in the fire to their gods. So the initial introduction to the idea of no human sacrifice uh, comes from the Akedah, the binding of Isaac, because God substitutes a ram instead of the a Abraham's son. And there are a number of rabbis in uh, 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 the the uh, 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 of ancient days uh, who. Uh, Believe God never wanted Abraham to sacrifice his son in the first place. Therefore, why did he ask for it? And the whole point is, if God could have raised him, why didn't God go ahead and let him and then resurrect him? He said, he no, really stop, do killed. not do that. <laughs> right. And the lesson, so. therefore, becomes no human sacrifice. And by the way, who exactly was it that died on the cross? Was it Jesus, the God who died? Well, my God can't die. Sorry about yours. Uh <laughs> And therefore, the only thing that could have died on the cross was Jesus the human, which is yeah. the very same human sacrifice that God condemns as something he hates and is abomination. Right. So, right. 
Yeah, Jason no. Jason Kempo, look look at last week's show that we had with Rabbi Federo. Uh, we we literally discussed this last week. Uh, the charge of the disciples that they should tell no man that Jesus was the Christ. He wanted to know what that means. And so uh, anyway, yeah, we did a whole show on the whole concept of it was called, look it up. It's called Jesus the Liar, and just watch that whole show. It's pretty awesome. So okay, so we got another caller. Caller, you're live on the air. Please tell us your name. Where you calling from? Hi, my name is uh, Michael. I'm from te- Texas. Um, I was wondering what the uh, the interpretation of Judaism uh, as it relates to Revelation, uh, or like I'm I'm assuming most of it would be completely dismissed. Um, but what is the this is kind of a topic as a whole. What is like the how they see the end times or the coming of the Messiah as opposed to modern Christianity? Okay, very good. All right, go to hang up now. Tune for your answer. Okay, thanks. Okay, okay, really. So, I, I, I'm not sure what is, about what, the what's connection with Revelation. Well, what's, what's Judaism? Mean, Revelation in general. What is Judaism's view on eschatology, on, on the end times, on everything? How is this? How is Judaism view that con, that, see, that that contrasts okay, what Christianity there, believes in the end times? Okay. Well, first of all, the Messiah who comes has a very specific description and a very specific tasks to do to show that he really is the actual Messiah. So the first thing is that the Messiah is supposed to be a human being born of two human parents coming in the world exactly the same way as every other human being, i.e. through the act of sexual intercourse. Uh, He can trace his lineage back through his human father, back to King David, through King Solomon, without going through uh, Jehoiakim, Jeconiah, or Shaltiel. Uh, he has certain tasks that he is anointed for. That's what the word Messiah means. He's anointed, picked by God to do very specific things in the in the world, things that people will recognize and be able to see, hear, taste, touch. You know, with their own senses, they will be able to show for themselves that it's true, that it actually happened. You know, it's easy to say, well, the Messiah is born in Bethlehem. Jesus was born in Bethlehem. There was the Messiah. Well, I haven't seen a birth certificate. So, you know, just the mere statement of it in the New Testament is no proof. Okay. Everything that they say that Jesus did to be the Messiah is unprovable. And everything that the real Messiah will do in the real world is very provable. Okay. If the real Messiah is supposed to make the people of the earth destroy all the uh, weapons of war, and it's supposed to take seven years for them to get rid of all the weapons, we'll know if there are still weapons in the universe now, won't we? You know, we'll know that there are weapons still on Earth. So if they're around, Messiah hasn't come yet. Okay, if we're supposed to, uh, if the real Messiah will command peace to the nations, you know, if, if all nations, languages, and people shall serve the Messiah, not that the Messiah is supposed to serve us, Okay, we'll know it. But all the things that Christianity says that the Messiah has done in Jesus are not provable. Okay, except on faith, because they believe the New Testament. Even though the New Testament contradicts itself, and even though the New Testament and its theology and belief system contradicts the Hebrew Scriptures, which we already talked about tonight. So what are, what's the laundry list of things that the real Messiah will do when the real Messiah comes? Meanwhile, at the Batmobile, Judaism mm-hmm. and Christianity, a contrast by Rabbi Stuart Federo. Oh, thank you. You are kind. And it's a very, really excellent, excellent book. If you haven't read this, it's great. It's also available in Espanol. Creencijudia.org. Uh, yep. So uh, it's also what on- is the job of the Messiah for which he was anointed? This is a partial list, not a complete list. Okay. First of all, preceding the real Messiah, the real Elijah appears. So you can't say, well, Joe Schmo is the Eli- is Elijah, even if he denies being it. But he really was. Can't do that. Okay, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the eternal, and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, or else I will come and smite the earth with a curse. And what did Jesus say? He said, uh, first of all, he said that John the Baptist was Elijah, even though Elijah himself, I'm sorry, even though John the Baptist in John first. John chapter 1, verse 21, explicitly is asked, are you Elijah? He says, no. Okay. But also, what did Jesus uh, say in Matthew 10, 34? 
Okay, I've come to turn the hearts of the children against the fathers, the heart of the fathers against the children. I will come and make your own enemies those of your own household. So Jesus is saying that he'll do exactly the opposite of what Elijah the prophet is supposed to do. And Elijah the prophet is supposed to herald the coming of the Messiah. You'd think that Elijah the prophet is going to be doing the things that the Messiah is supposed to do. They're kind of working together on this. Okay, uh, the Messiah has his own children and reestablishes through his own children the dynasty of King David. That's the whole point of being related to King David. Okay, uh, it says that uh, Daniel chapter 7, verse 13 and 14, verse 14, there was given to him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. Of course, Matthew 20, verse 28 says that Jesus said the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve everybody else. Exactly the opposite of what Daniel 7.14 says to do. Uh, the Messiah will bring an eternal peace between nations, between peoples, and between people. So if you look out your front window and you see two kids fighting, Messiah hasn't come yet. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2 through 4. You shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the eternal's house shall be established in the top of the mountains, and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. Many people shall go and say, Come, let's go up to the mountain of the eternal, to the house of God of Jacob. He will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For our Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the eternal from Jerusalem. Doesn't say from Christianity. <clears throat> he shall judge among the nations, shall rebuke many people. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. Yet, since Jesus has been nothing since wars. Micah chapter 4, verse 1 through 4 says the same thing. Ezekiel chapter 39, verse 9. They that dwell in the cities of Israel shall go forth and shall set on fire and burn the weapons, the shields and the bucklers, the bows and the arrows, the handstaves, the spears, and they shall burn them with fire seven years. Okay. Uh, Gentiles will come to Judaism, either converting fully to Judaism, or at least they will become serious about B'nai Noach. Okay, uh, <laughs> after those days, saith the eternal Jeremiah 31, 30, uh, I'm sorry, 31, 30, 30, 30, 30, I can't read. After those days, says the eternal, I will put my law in their inward parts, write it in their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my own people. They shall no longer have to teach anybody to know God, because they'll all know me. So if Christians are still missionizing, then the Messiah hasn't really come, because when the real Messiah comes, they'll already know God. Zechariah chapter 8, verse 23, same idea. Isaiah 11, 9, they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the eternal as the waters cover the sea. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 9, Zechariah chapter 14, verse 16, the earth, the eternal shall be king over all the earth. On that day, there shall be one God in his name, one and, it sh and 16, it shall come to pass that every one that is left out of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall go up from year to year to worship the king, the eternal of hosts, to keep the feast of Sukkot. End of all forms of idolatry, Zechariah chapter 13, verse 2. The universal recognition that the Jewish idea of God is God, Isaiah 11, 9, which we just read. The world, sorry McDonald's, sorry Burger King. I say that every time. The world becomes vegetarian. How can you be eating meat if the world is no longer violent? Isaiah 11, 6 through 9. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the young lion and the fatling together. And the little child shall lead them. And the cow and the bear shall feed. Their young ones shall lie down together. And the lion shall eat straw like the ox. Hasn't happened yet. In gathering to the 12 tribes, Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 24, for I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. I don't see how you can get any clearer than that. The temple will be rebuilt, Isaiah 2, 2, which shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the eternal's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. No more famine, Ezekiel 36, 29, 30. I also will save you from all your clean, uncleanness. I will call for the corn and will increase it and lay no famine upon you. I will multiply the fruit of the tree and the increase of the field. And you shall receive no more reproach of famine. Death will cease. He will swallow up death in victory. And the eternal God will wipe away tears from off all faces. And the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth. For the eternal has spoken it. That's Isaiah 25, 8. The dead will resurrect, Isaiah 26, 19. Your dead men shall live. Together with my dead body shall they arise. I don't know how you can get clearer than that. 
Uh, Daniel 12, 2, Ezekiel 37, 12 to 13, Isaiah 43, 5 to 6, say the same thing. Nations will help the Jews materially. Isaiah 60, verses 5 and 6. Isaiah 60, verse 10 to 12, same thing. Okay? Uh, eternal joy and gladness will characterize the Jewish people. Stop the weeping and wailing over the pogroms, the Holocaust, the Crusades, uh, the Inquisition, uh, the uh, 1066, all that stuff. And we'll only be glad and joyful for, you know, forever. Therefore, the redeemed of the eternal shall return and come with singing unto Zion, and everlasting joy shall be upon their head. They shall obtain gladness and joy and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. Isaiah 51, 11. The Jews will be sought for spiritual guidance. Zechariah chapter 8, verse 23. Thus says the eternal of hosts, in those days it shall come to pass, ten men shall take hold of all the languages of the nations, take hold of all the skirts of the hymn that is a Jew, saying, we will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. God is with the Jews, not with those of other religions. All weapons of war shall be destroyed. We already had that. Egyptian river runs dry. Trees will yield their fruit monthly in the land of Israel. Each tribe of Israel will receive its inheritance, Ezekiel 47, 13, and 14. And also concurrent with all this, the nations of the earth will recognize that they have been wrong, that the Jews have been right, and that the sins of the Gentile nations, their persecutions, their murdering of Jews, which the Gentile nations committed, all have been borne by the Jewish people which is the meaning of Isaiah 53, that too will come to pass. So in a nutshell, not a full list, okay? Those are the uh, things that are supposed to happen. Okay, that was awesome. Good job. But, okay. Well, it's, I, I have it on, on a list. It's a laundry list. That's awesome. That's what we like. By the way, I also found the laundry list of 53 verses against the Trinity. Okay, great. Uh, let's take this caller. Caller, you're live on the air. Please tell us your name where you're calling from. Uh, William, can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. Go ahead. Who am I speaking okay, with? Okay, this is Paul from San Antonio, Texas, not too far from you. Paul, welcome, brother. How are you? Thank you, Rabbi, for your service. I do my best. <laughs> my, I wanted to talk about uh, John chapter 4, verse 22, I believe, when he's talking to a Samaritan woman, when he says... Uh, he John professes himself, four. I believe, that the Jewish teachings are correct, that through uh, the Jews is salvation. And uh, there was no church at that time that I, I know of. He, he had disciples, but uh, he didn't have no church or anything. So I think he's saying that the Jews have uh, 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 the right teachings, doesn't he? Okay, Rabbi, you looking at it? Uh, and and no, woman, you know not what. We, woman uh, at the well. Right. Woman, believe me, the hour comes when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet in Jerusalem worship the Father. You okay. worship, you not know, you do not know what. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. By the way, Jesus also said that uh, the Pharisees sit in the seat of Moses. Yeah, Matthew, that means that the Pharisees right. have the uh, authority. And uh -huh. he said he goes he goes on to say do what they say not as they do, right? Okay, that's where we get that. that hey, saying let's from. let's do this. Well, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna... I, I think he's professing there that uh, the teachings are correct, aren't? Isn't he? <laughs> right on. That's what he's saying because Jesus himself was a Jew and probably would be appalled at what Christianity has created in his name. Paul, I'm going to go to Hamp now uh, to free open the phone lines. Okay, so thank you for your call. All right. All right. Very good. All right. Um, you want to go take the next call or do you want to go on that for a minute? We got three calls on hold. Good, take take one. I'm okay, all right, good deal. Okay, caller, you live on the air. Please tell us today where you're calling from. Um, hey, this is Ken Raff from uh, Johnson City, Tennessee. Ken Raff, how are you, brother? I'm good, man. How are you? Doing well, doing well. What's the question you got for tonight? Well, I am. Uh, I've recently come out of, I guess, the uh, Christian church and then five years in Hebrew roots. So uh, the, the question I have now is, do, do you convert to Judaism or do you follow the Bible or the Tanakh as, as it's uh, written? 
and without the Judaism piece, and so am I mixing up something? No, you, uh, you've you got a legitimate question. I mean, there, there's no there's no commandment for anybody to convert to Judaism. If you if you really strongly desire to convert to Ju- Judaism, you should. If you just feel like that that's where you're supposed to be, then you should. Uh, but there's no need to. I mean, there's no the relationship status <laughs> between um, between a, a, a righteous Gentile, if you, I prefer to call it that, uh, than a Jew, which would be the no hide thing uh, is I mean there there's you're not going to you're not going to necessarily make your your life better with God if you convert you just you just follow his rules if you're this then do this if you're this then do this and if both these are doing this then they're doing what they're supposed to be doing and you're in a in a proper standings with Hashem you know what I mean so that's that's kind of the basic of it but if you want to convert or if you feel like you may be Jewish you may need to search search that out and follow through with a somewhat of a conversion process to complete Louis Ordeal. Really? So if you have the Jewish roots, you should, you think, convert if, over. If your that. mother is Jewish, basically, as the thing is, is, and you've got Jewish DNA, I would, I would, you probably need to seek uh, going through a conversion. But if you don't, then you kind of have the option. You, can, you still can if you want to, but you don't, you don't have to. You can, you're perfectly fine the way you are as long as you believe in one God and you, you know, follow the, uh, the laws of, I guess they say the laws of Noah, the Noahide laws, which is about 75 to 80 uh, laws in the Torah, um, and so that's kind of where you would be at. So, and so it, it's not offensive to d- d- it, versus. I I don't understand the Noahide stuff yet, and so the I guess I don't know how you deal with. Well, the, here's the thing: if you um, if you really want to to do the things that the Jewish people do for the holidays or the holy days. And if you, if you really just feel torn because you really want to be able to don, to put on to fill in when you pray and you want to wear seat seat and the yarmulke and things like that, then you need to convert to Judaism because as a Noahide, you shouldn't be doing that. Basically it's kind of like impersonating a police officer. So that's one aspect. Um, but yeah. So if, if you have any specific questions that might help, like uh, that help us direct where you're headed with your, no, that that's basically it. Okay. I guess. Okay. That's okay. It. Thanks. Oh, you're very welcome. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Can I add my two cents worth? Absolutely. I was hoping you would. Yeah. Um, what was his name? Uh, his name is Ken Raff. Ken, Ken? Ken, yes. Okay. Ken, hope you're still listening. Um, okay. Um, not quite sure where to begin. Um, here, here are some things that I think you need to think about. Okay, uh, what you have learned about Judaism from Christianity, what you have learned of Judaism from the Hebrew Roots movement, is tainted. It is looked at through Christian-colored glasses. You are learning about Judaism through Christian influence, through through a Christian prejudice, if you want to know the truth. And I don't know what you know. I don't know what they taught you. But what, I, what I'm saying is, is that you may very well have to relearn much of what you think you know. Okay, that's one thing. Second of all, um, you can't be, you can't believe in opposing things at the same time. In order to be Jewish and do Judaism, okay, you'd have to abandon your belief in all of Christianity, Hebrew roots, all of that, because it's not compatible with anything about Judaism. He did say he has already abandoned that. Okay, I, I, I couldn't hear all everything. Yes, yeah, he's, he's no okay. longer a New Testament father all right. at all. Okay, all right. Then that leads me to another thing. Okay, anybody can pick up the Hebrew Scriptures and conclude anything they want to. Okay, you can, you can create a religion called Kenism or Kenianity if you want to. But if you're talking about Judaism... The Judaism that has survived 4,000 years, give or take, 4,000 years, that is an un, un uh, what's the word, un, not undivided, un, un, uninterrupted tradition going back to Abraham, okay, coming originally from God, it, it, then the, all there is is Judaism, and that means religion. That means the way in which Jews for 4,000 years, whatever you want to call them, uh, Hebrews, Israelites, children of Israel, Jews, whatever you want to call them, okay, how we have understood the Bible is what Judaism is. So you can come up with anything you want, 
But if you're talking about the Judaism that lasts 4,000 years, that God himself has made survive, then it's Judaism. That means the religion of Judaism. That means rabbinic Judaism. That means the, the Judaism we find revealed to us through the, through the uh-huh. Torah, okay, through Mount si- from Mount Sinai, okay, as interpreted by the rabbis over the last 2,200 years, give or take. Or if you want to go back to Ezra and Nehemiah, Nehemiah, go 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 back to twenty five hundred years plus. Uh, that that that's your choice. Or right. come up with Kennyism or Kennyanity. Uh, that was kind of funny, Kennyanity. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, he's out. He's definitely out for sure. So that's kind of cool. That's really good, actually. Okay, so we've got another caller. Caller, you're live on the air. Please tell us your name. Where you're calling from? Hello. Yes, you're live on the air. Yes, sir. Uh, this is the Rev Robbins over here in North Carolina. I'm a new uh, member to your YouTube. Yes, Rev Robbins. He said, I earned that title and I ain't giving it up. <laughs> no, I worked sir. hard for that title. Um, That's funny. I, I, I just want to, I, I, I real quick, I wanted to say thank you guys so much for just helping me find what I've lost. Awesome. Um, I really appreciate that, um, knowing that there is a God and he is real and all that. But real quick, um, I, the question I had for the rabbi is why is it that we, like, where's the signs and wonders anymore? Like, where, why, why isn't anyone mm. calling down fire from the sky and, you know, doing, you know, splitting the Red Sea and stuff like that? Like, where, like, what, what, why, why isn't God performing those signs and wonders so that everybody could see him and, and want to? follow exactly. them like that like, we, like a, a, every other like a lot of religions have signs and wonders and you know where's all right like, where's the serious miracles and signs and wonders like we had in the old testament right absolutely i think that's an incredibly good question rev go and hang up now Mr. Robbins. Question. And, and let me t- oh, i'm sorry what? oh no you want to keep him on you can well no he no i just I, okay I just, cool cool Okay. Wanted him to know that I thought his question was incredible. Yeah, that's great. We did. T- okay. We talked about this last week, but this is something we can talk about every week. So we, we did. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Uh, tells you my memory. That's all right. Uh, all right, uh, I'll hang up now. Okay, brother. Thanks, man. Bye bye. All right. Let me say a few things. Everybody loves Cecil B. DeMille and Steven Spielberg special effects. Okay, we love special effects. We want absolute, bona fide, undeniable proof. Okay, but God shifted his 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 what's the word? his focus. Okay, God explicitly tells us in the book of Deuteronomy that miracles don't prove anything. God doesn't want us to to be impressed with miracles and believe in God because of Cecil B. DeMille and Steven Spielberg special effects. God wants us to understand the message of God that we are all made in the image of God, we are all little lower than the angels, that sometimes we mess up either by accident or on purpose, but there is forgiveness in the world. God explicitly gives us what God wants us to know. God gives us explicitly through his commandments how he wants us to act, but he's not going to give us miracles because he doesn't want us to, he doesn't want us to follow God and, and his revelation because of special effects, he wants us to follow God because we know it's the right thing to do because it's from God. That's how I that's how I look at it. If you take a look at Deuteronomy 13, if there arises among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and gives you a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder comes to pass wherever he spoke to you of, and but then he says, let's go after other gods which you have not known and let us serve them, you shall not listen to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, for the eternal your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Okay? Not because you believe in God, love God because of a special effect, but because you know to, in your heart and soul, and remember something, when the Bible speaks of the heart, it, 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 the, the heart was seen as the, as, the, as the seat of the intelligence, when it says love God with all your heart, it means your intellect. It doesn't mean with your emotions, with your feelings. And so God is saying that even if somebody does a special effect, but if the message contradicts what God has given us, you already got the messages from God. If it contradicts what you already know comes from God, 
don't believe the messenger, even if his even if his prophecy comes true. So even as far back as the Torah, God is telling us that, you know, Sinai, Steven Spielberg, Cecil B. DeMille special effects aren't the thing. It's believe in God. You know it comes from God. Believe in God. Respect God. Obey God. Keep God's commandments. Okay, the 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 seven laws or categories some say for the for the Gentile nations and the 613 given you know to Moses at Sinai for the Jewish community. But just because somebody comes along and does special effects, and, and by the way, you know there's a there's a characteristic that I also find you know interesting. God is spiritual. We live in a physical world. The physical world in which we live operates by laws set up by God. God can't start over. God doesn't do the special effects. And in this day and age, if God did a special effect, then it would have to comply with God's own laws of nature, which means that even if God created a second moon that all of a sudden appears and perfectly rotates around the earth, you know, has an orbit around the earth, that nothing happens bad to the earth because there's a second moon, scientists would come up with a reason to explain it because it still has to follow uh, the laws of nature, the laws of physics, the laws of science. So what, what could God do today? that would make everybody go, oh yeah, there's a real God. I don't think God can do much of anything because human beings with their rational, uh, uh, their ability to rationalize, okay, their scientific minds and looking at the laws of nature, the laws of physics would come up with the reasons why they happen that don't necessarily point to God. You see what I'm saying, William? Am I am I somewhat clear? Yes, I think so. You know, I, I just, I don't, I, I, I think God has given us God's message. God wants us to act a certain way. God, from the moment of creation, God's main concern is on goodness. And God saw that it was good, and God saw that it was good, and God saw that it was good. Right. And so God realizes that, that you know, there's got to be rules and regulations to run your life by, okay, and that's what God wants us to follow, not special effects. Right. That that would be my answer. Rabbi, do we got time for one more question? Okay. So if Absolutely. you don't mind. All right. Caller, you are live on the air. Please tell us your name where you're calling from. Hi. Um good evening, Rabbi. Um, Hi. my question is Rabbi, when I say the bedtime Shema, there's a section that's where I say, I forgive every Jew. Uh, Why has been hushed him? forgiven us uh, why what do you mean god hasn't forgiven us for what what are we referring to we're still in exile he hasn't forgiven us well i could have sworn there was such a thing as the state of israel so i'm not sure i agree with you on that point we're not in exile except by our own choice you can move to israel and make aliyah that's a good point yeah why well, he hasn't gathered us in yet because our choice has been to stay away that's our choice, not God's choice. What's preventing you from going to Israel? Your own choice. God is not saying you can't go or that there's no Israel to go to. Okay, Rabbi, I'll tell you what, let's let's go ahead I, if you I, don't mind. I don't mind. know if she can hear me. No, it, it was I think she was listening still listening through her computer, so that's which was causing her delayed responses. And so uh but anyway, I think we're probably gonna go ahead and wrap it up for, for tonight if you don't mind. I'm just gonna kinda go and try to eat some dinner with the family, try to Drink a bottle of NyQuil, maybe a bottle of scotch, <laughs> something to knock my butt out. <laughs> Once again, you didn't let me talk about this earlier. Um, so Rabbi's book, Judaism and Christianity in Contrast, absolutely brilliant. little stick of dynamite. It's amazing. Um, so if you haven't got it, oh, I've already got it on the screen. But hold it right there. Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. Hold it up again because I want them to see I was, both. I was actually reading the uh, chat. Do, uh, Rabbi, hold both books up again. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Because you got the, the English and the Spanish. There you go. Can you see it? <laughs> yep, that's it. Awesome. Da, 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 da. 
<laughs> very, very good. Okay, guys, uh, again, it's been fun. Thank you for the moderators out there. You guys do a great job. Um, Hello, my dear friends. Hope this message finds you well. If you like the way this channel is going and the channel has been a blessing to you, please consider supporting the channel by going to the website, tanaktalk.com. T-A-N-A-C-H-T-A-L-K.com. Thank you once again for your time and for supporting Tanak Talk. Shalom.